Hey guys, welcome to the Liberal Hive Mind, a channel solely focused on exposing the abundant hypocrisy of the left. All right, so today I've recorded two videos so far. This is the third. Firstly, we did some polling analysis, getting into the data, into the numbers, and into general sentiment. The next video, we were talking about Donald Trump's course of appeal here, what arguments are likely to be made, how it affects the whole process, the holes in the case itself, you know, the serious stuff. Now, it's time for all the good news. Sure, there's a guilty verdict, and obviously that's a bad label. The threat of prison, obviously, looms, but it's not all bad and it's not done yet. It's not over yet. Trump hasn't been sentenced. He's still got some options to appeal, which could likely extend this thing to well past November. In other words, it's freaking election season. Enough with the doom and gloom. Let's see what's going on because it's not all so bad. In fact, it might even be the best. Let me show you guys exactly what I mean by that. We got some stuff to get into, so let's roll the tape. All right, folks, so the guilty verdict hit, and one thing that everyone's had their eye on is the fundraising numbers. You know, that ought to show what people are getting behind. The old concept of putting your money where your mouth is. Let's see where the people are at. Is Donald Trump going to be ruined by the felon tag by the 34 count verdict? Is the support and money going to dry up? You'd expect if that was the case that Joe Biden would be hauling in millions and Donald Trump would be fizzling out into irrelevancy. But no, the exact opposite is what happened. Initially, we spoke about the Trump campaign pulling together $34 million in a 10 hour period. Well, that fundraising bonanza has continued, of course with slight diminishing returns, but I think we're on day three, at least as I'm recording this video, and Trump's here talking about a record beyond all records for fundraising. Take a look. I think we've set a record beyond all records for fundraising. That's like a poll. And another one just came out just before I got in that we're six points higher than we were before. So I don't know if that holds up. I mean, I'm just not sure, but people get it. It's a scam. And the Republican Party is really, uh, they've stuck. They stick together in this. They, they see what's, it's weaponization of the Justice Department, of the FBI. And, you know, that's all coming out of Washington. You may think it's, uh, you may think it's brag. Now, of course, this could be Trump hyperbole. You know, everything Trump does is the greatest and biggest and most successful ever. He's obviously a salesman. It could be that. Or it's actually the greatest campaign haul in American history. Daughter-in-law Lara Trump and his son Eric Trump give us a little bit of an insider scoop. This might be a little inside information, but as I was leaving my house about 37 seconds ago, I asked my wife, what are we up to now? And she said, just in terms of, of small dollar, we're well over $70 million. This is... $21 donations, $43 donations, right? Small dollar donations. If you add the large dollar donations to it, you're over $200 million, but you're over $70 million. And by the way, Maria, 30% wow. of those people have never been seen before by a political party, right? I mean, these are Americans who are pissed off. They're coming out of the woodwork, and they want to support a guy that they just believe... Um, is getting bamboozled by a system. and The American people have really spoken up. And, Casey, they've spoken with their wallets and their pocketbooks. Even in a time where our economy is in such bad shape, thanks to horrific policies by Joe Biden, the American people came out, and in 48 hours after Donald Trump's verdict was read, our campaign and the RNC raised $70 million in digital fundraising. This is small-dollar donations. And I think the amazing statistic to take out of that is that 30% of that money came in from people who had never once donated to Donald Trump. People are very upset about what they saw happen this week to someone they, that could, should never have had a case brought against him. We all know that if his name had been anything other than Donald Trump, this case would have never seen the light of day. Supposedly, in 48 hours after Donald Trump's verdict was read, the Trump campaign, as well as the RNC, raised $70 million in small dollar donations. And that's just small dollar donations. The fundraising apparatus as a whole has supposedly pulled in more than $200 million. I mean, let's really put this into perspective. When the Biden campaign pulled in $25 million during a single event with wealthy donors, Owners in Manhattan, they essentially acted as if the election was over on that day. Donald Trump's broke, Joe Biden's pulling in $25 million, a new record. Well, how insignificant does that $25 million look like now? $200 million. You know, what happened to all the confidence? I thought the Trump verdict was supposed to be good for the Biden campaign. You'd expect them to be cheering, not desperately begging for relevancy, as they fail to match Donald Trump's enthusiasm and campaign fundraising, here's an email that they sent out to their email list. This is the last email you'll get from us about this month's fundraising deadline. We promise. 
See, Donald Trump was found guilty yesterday. Over $35 million has poured into his campaign. We thought we'd see more support come into ours, but we're dangerously short of our fundraising goal. Time is running out. We just need 18 more people from your community to chip in before midnight. Will you donate $25 now? They're absolutely desperate. And when questioned about this, Biden's campaign communications director, Michael Tyler, responded like this. <laughs> So I, I want to dig into the strategy and lots of questions here. People are asking me, so I'm going to ask you. I, but I just do want to start with the fundraising number because the Biden team has had a huge cash advantage, which is a big opportunity for spending money on organizing and investing in states. But Trump, if that number is correct, and we don't know for sure, had a huge haul. The Biden team also sent out, in the 24 hours after the verdict, the Biden team also sent out a fundraising email. How did the email do? you have any numbers for me or give me a characterization yeah, of it? Yeah, yeah. Well, thank you so much for having me. Um, listen, I think as it relates to the Trump number, they don't exactly have a well-established relationship with the truth. So we'll see what the number ends up actually being. I have no doubt that they raised a significant amount of money uh, because his base, we know, is going to stick with him through thick and thin, whether he's a convicted felon or not. Um, this campaign did, in fact, have one of the best stretches of fundraising since the campaign The launched. Biden campaign. Uh, our campaign. Yes. In, in fact, uh, that is true. Um, but I in think, the 24 hours after? Or yeah. And the consistently since the since the verdict, we've had uh, our most successful stretch. Um, but what I will say is that the money that we are raising is actually going to things like communicating with the voters that are going to decide this election. 200 field offices open across the country, uh, the paid advertisements that we're running, the organizing apparatus that we're deepening in all the battleground states right now, that 53 million or whatever it ends up being for the Trump campaign, uh, that's still in large part money that's going to pay legal fees for somebody who's now a convicted felon. Um, and so we feel very confident about the fundraising operation that we are running in the Biden camp. We feel very confident about the infrastructure that we're setting up across all the battleground states. It's going to uh, relentlessly communicate with all of the voters that are going to decide the pathway to 270 electoral votes. Totally skating around the numbers, around the issue. He doesn't want to say jack squat because their numbers are probably horrible compared to Trump. When this stuff is made public, I think the disparity is going to be frankly shocking. During the primary process, the Biden camp was ahead by over a hundred million dollars in terms of accessible funds. I think that dollar lead is about to get flipped on its head. And what that dollar lead is telling us isn't just that there's a significant fund raising gap or dollar gap between the Biden campaign and the Trump campaign, but that there's a significant enthusiasm gap. Just think about what it means. The Trump team told us that the first $34.8 million that they fundraised was from 485,000 small donors. That's an average donation of $72 per person. Well, now, since they're telling us the numbers at 70 million, that's basically a 2x, meaning it's possible that nearly or possibly even more than a million individual American citizens have been motivated enough to send Donald Trump money. You know, the sheer scale of it is starting to become very clear. People are showing up for the former president. If they're showing up to give money in his defense, those same people are obviously going to show up to vote against the guy who's trying to imprison their preferred candidate. We're supposed to sit here all doom and gloom. Oh no, it's over. Game over. They're going to lock Donald Trump in a dirty cell. I guess it's time to go home. It's time to give up. It seems as though that was the expectation, but instead, we're seeing history being made and we're possibly seeing, again, the Democrats' worst nightmare coming to fruition. Anyways, that's pretty much it. That's what I got for you guys on this one. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to leave a like and possibly subscribe to the channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.